My name is John Crather, and I'm your host for this event. This is our first uh, Black Box Tech Breakfast. We're going to try and do this every month, but there isn't some other major event in town uh, that either we're having a good day. So, uh, if you have any suggestions for tech ideas for future tech breakfasts, um, and I hand out the survey form to put a note on there. I'd like to see something about this topic. Uh, let me know. We'll try and be driven by our audience. And, uh, I'm going to videotape this event. It'll be uh, put on YouTube here in the next couple days, and I'll send everybody an email. So if you want to re-watch part, parts of Jeff's brilliant presentation, <laughs> uh, you can do that. And if he makes any really big uh, faux pas, you can watch that over and over, and maybe it'll get a million YouTube hits. Yeah, we're not going viral. <laughs> um, so anyways, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jeff Lowe, a uh, sales engineer, as you know, mm -hmm. yep. with uh, Chantal, who will tell us all about brilliantly simple solutions. Exactly. So I um, want to thank you for coming out today. I know the weather and traffic's horrible, so it's always a challenge. You know, every it seems like every time I should be on. Um, every it seems like every time I come up here, there's always something going on. I was telling Jennifer, it's normally when I go south, you know, somewhere around Manchester, there's always an overturned high, you know truck on the highway shutting it down or you know trying to get home. So I actually live in West Tennessee. Uh, I am a uh, I'm the short tail sales engineer for the Gulf states. Uh, I cover a four state territory. Um, I've been with Shortel for about nine months now. Um, before that, I spent 15 years with an integrator uh, that installed Shortel. Um, so I've been around the product for the last fi for the last eight years is when they picked it up. So I've done the installation, I've done sales, I've done the design and engineering work. Um, when the opportunity came on came available for me to come to Shortel, it just made sense. Um, you know, I've spent 22 years in the industry. I've done everything from pull cable. Uh, to sold, you know, small key systems and, and large, you know, 5,000 port PBXs. Um, so when I when I had the opportunity to uh, to come over here, it just made sense because the way that they do things over there is it, totally unique. And so what I want to do is just spend a little bit of time talking about voice over IP as a as a technology. Then I also want to spend some time talking about how Shortel does it a little bit differently to make it the brilliantly simple that it is. So we're going to talk a little bit about meeting your needs. And doing that. Uh, kind of the agenda I set out for today, and again, like, like John said, we can kind of free flow it a little bit if you need to, but I want to talk to you about how Shortel can meet your needs. I'm going to do a quick introduction to mobility, unified communications. You know, everybody, you know, I was at an appointment yesterday down in Mississippi, and the guy says, you know, everybody has two phones now. There's one on the desk and the one in their pocket. And so, you know, when are those going to come together? Because if you think about the word unified, unified means, you know, togetherness, right? Well, if I have two separate phones, am I unified? No. So we're going to talk a little bit about unified communications. Then I'm going to tell you why Shortel does it the way that we do it. And then we'll have some Q&A at the end. Okay. So when we talk about what we need to look at when we evaluate voice over IP type technology, most customers coming from a TDM, from a TDM world or a time division multiplier, the old world, right, they're used to that reliability and availability. You know, our computers over the last 10, 15, 20 years have evolved from opening up Peachtree by doing C colon backslash Peachtree.exe to clicking a mouse, right? We've gone from, you know, when I was in college at University of Memphis, I had a, I had a 286, which was an upgrade from my, you know, from my high school days, it was an 8088 processor, to now, I mean, you know, I've got a, I've got a Mac with, you know, an i7 processor and a terabyte of storage. I mean, I could remember my first hard drive was in the, in the kilobytes, you know, because there just wasn't that much data. But the thing that makes a difference is when you pick up your phone, it works, right? Your cousin John and I talked about this a little earlier. If your internet goes down, a customer calls you, you can still pick up the phone and write that order down and key it into your CRM, into Salesforce.com or Microsoft Dynamics or whatever you're using for a CRM package later. But you can still have that customer interaction, right? If your internet goes down. If your phone goes down, you can have internet all day long. All you're going to be doing is surfing Google looking for, you know, what's trending next, right? So availability and uh, reliability and availability. Also scalability. So in today's society, or in today's technolo technology world, there's a lot of, 
uh, uh, different offerings that are out there from the same manufacturer. So today, why you know National College might be, you know, 200 phones, but you guys have growth plans, right? If you don't have a growth plan, you're not going to survive in today's economy, right? So you're going to grow. So if you buy a system that only scales to 200 to make what you need today, and then you hit to 250, you have to throw everything you bought originally away, right, and start over because that's the way that the old manufacturers used to do stuff. So you want something that's going to scale with your growth plans, okay? Why throw anything away? Why not reuse everything that you bought throughout time? All right. We're also going to talk about it's got to be easy to use and easy to manage. I can have the best looking telephone, the greatest architecture story that's out there, and everything about it, but if you can't use it, nobody's going to touch it, and therefore you're just wasting money. So you want something that's going to be easy to use. Also, in today's world, you know, there's so much information on our fingertips. You know, anything we want. I can be talking to my wife. We're driving down the street, and she'll say, I wonder why blank. Used to be, you know, in the old days, we'd sit there and we'd ponder that thought, and we'd come up with ideas. We might have a little social dialogue at a water cooler, and, you know, we'd get the answer maybe in three or four days, right? We might get home and pull out the encyclopedias if you've got, you know, a set that's five years or, you know, five years old or, or newer, hopefully. But today, I have my answer in 30 seconds. Why? Because I have a smartphone. I Google it, and I'm like, I don't have to wait for my answers anymore, right? Well, that's because I manage my information flow. Well, you've got to be able to manage your technology as well. And then finally, the total cost of ownership. We're going to drive down on this because in today's economy, making every dollar you spend earn you money is critical. I mean, it's key to success. You know, we look at inflating gas prices. Well, you know, we can't control that from a technology standpoint. I mean, I guess somebody, at, you know, like a refinery could. But, you know, how can we take money that you would normally spend rolling a truck out there to add a user? You know, I'm going to show you how. Have you ever, have you ever done any administration on PBX before? Okay, probably not. So I'm going to show you how you can actually add a user to our system in five seconds. You never touched a PBX before in your life, and you can do it in five seconds. Okay? So we're going to talk about that. So let's go ahead and dig into it. And we're going to talk about architecture and kind of drill down on the difference between a distributed or a centralized architecture. Okay? Why is architecture important? Well, it's the same thing we just talked about, the reliability and availability, the administration, and the cost of that architecture. So. We talked about a little bit about complexity, but here's an example of some of my competitors that will take old technology and try to update it, right? So you remember the old typewriters? Put a mouse on it. Well, looks really neat. Looks technologically advanced. Hey, that might be something I want, you know, one day because I'm a tech gadget and I got everything, right? Well, what good is that going to do? You know, how, how does that actually work? Or you can play the Mr. Potato Head story, and I can take a bunch of different pieces and put it all together, and I can have a very robust system that the right hand doesn't know what left hand does, so it's very confusing and very complex, right? So complexity is, is actually something we create typically, all right? So let's talk about how it, it works in the past. So today, in our, uh, in our telecom world, we basically have silos, if you will. So each individual region or market or, or business unit, right? Now, are you guys a single campus? You guys only have one campus? You have a lot of campuses, right? Okay. So imagine this as your campus structure, okay? So you have your main campus, and then you have a couple of remotes out there. Well, today you probably have a key system or PBX at the main campus and a key system or PBX at the, at the remote campus, at each remote campus. So when you look at that, the big black box here in the middle is actually the PBX, right? So if I have a user in San Francisco or at you know the main campus, and he goes to New York to work for two weeks, his phone is still here in San Francisco. There's no ties between these, right? Each one of these is just a singular, hey, come on in. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh, you're fine. Please, please. Don't worry about me. So we're just uh, kind of starting talking a little bit about technology and architecture, so just feel free to jump in the dialogue anywhere you want to. Um, 
so we have these individual silos, right? The, the, the circles don't know what the other circles are doing. There's no information sharing between those, okay? So what people have done in the past, or what we've done with voice over IP in the earlier days, and voice over IP being voice over internet protocol, not necessarily, you know, like Skype um, or um, uh, what some of the other, Bonage is the other one that you see a lot of marketing for. Voice over IP, they use that type of technology where they're taking your voice that's normally a, it's an up and down pitch and value, mine's a little on the lower side than everybody else's, and they turn it into zeros and ones and they put it across an internet wire style thing, right? We're talking about voice over IP, uh, I actually like, in short tail world we call it IP telephony, right? Because it's not just voice over the internet, we're doing IP or, or internet protocol telephony. So. Um, in voice over IP world, what they did is they took, and if you notice I got the same sites, but we leveraged this thing in the middle called the wide area network that gave me that connectivity between each individual location. So now I have the information sharing that, that needs to transfer between the sites. Now I can see if Robert's on the phone. I know if Richard is trying to call me because I see his name on my display. You know, I see Richard, and it's a four-digit dial from Richard, okay, instead of being a seven or ten-digit. Yes, sir. Well, that's a, from a wireless area network, it, it could be just about fiber, uh, MPLS, or, or multi-packet layering system. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be wireless. It can be anything. So anything that connects point A to point, business to business, okay? So the Internet connects you to the, to the rest of the world, right? A wide area network, if you think about it, a local area network is local to your business. So inside the four walls of this black box office, they have a local area network. Now this particular office is connected to Memphis, okay? There's a wide area network that connects this office to Memphis. Allows Memphis, you know, for example, Richard sitting in his office in Memphis and sends John an email, it doesn't have to go out over the internet. It uses their wide area network. It just takes a small, kind of like a neighborhood, if you will, okay? So your, your neighborhoods are connected by highways, right? So your neighborhood is a LAN, right? The highways that connect your neighborhoods are WANs. You can still get from point A to point B. You just go a different road. Does that make sense? Everybody tracking that? Okay. All right. So we use the WAN to share information across there, okay? <clears throat> but what happens if the WAN goes down, okay? I've got my main PBX up here. All these phones are working off that. So if the WAN, if, if when I make a phone call, if it's got to go out through here, Right? But I can't get there because the wide area network is down. What happens? So what manufacturers did is they came out and they put PBXs or they put IP servers at each location. So I challenged this. What is the difference between this picture and the picture I showed you a minute ago other besides the connectivity? There's not. If a user in San Francisco is added, New York may or may not know about them, but there's still individual silos. So you're still managing four separate systems. You still have four times the cost. You still have all the, the, all the problems you had. You just now have that visibility when the WAN is up. <clears throat> then you also have to have management in the middle and everything else. So how do we do it? Well, if you notice, same diagram, right? So we have San Francisco, we have New York, satellite. We still have a wide area network but instead of having an individual silo at each location, we use our short gear voice appliances. We'll talk a little bit more about our architecture when I go into the director demo here in a few minutes. But we use these little short gear voice switches. I have a full functioning PBX here. Now this is my rolling demo kit. I take this with me everywhere I go. If it's in the trunk of my car, I kind of feel like John Candy and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles showing shower curtains with this thing, right? Well. This is a full function working demo, right? I could spin this up for a customer who had a down system. I could make this thing be your phone system in, in a matter of minutes, right? Now, Black Box has a full working one that's deployed in the server room behind us that we can take a look at after we get done if you want to. But the key is in these little appliances right here. Up at the top, you can't see it. This, is, this case is misleading as to how big the system actually is. This case is actually my little short gear voice switch. The short gear voice switch is actually my, my PBX that you saw, okay? Now the difference between the old voice over IP technology and mine, all of my processing happens in this box. 
Okay? I don't need that big server. I have a server that I use to control my big database. So when I add a user in San Francisco, San Francisco knows about it, and then that same server tells New York, hey, I just added Robert in San Francisco. Hey, St. Louis, Robert's in San Francisco. Hey, Seattle, Robert's in San Francisco. So every box knows. All right? And because there's only one big database for this whole network, if you should go to Seattle to work, right? you go to a remote campus, so you're going to go across town, you're going to go work at that remote campus, you walk up to a phone, and you log into that phone and you move that phone to you. You no longer have to call and say, hey, I'm not working in my office today. I'm working down in uh, over at West End, so call me at you know, the other phone number instead. So you just always have one phone number, okay? All right? So the other thing that we do is we actually have connectivity to the Public Service Telephone Network, or PSTN. So we can actually provide dial tone in the event of a WAN failure these individual boxes continue to work in isolated mode. They will continue to serve the users of St. Louis, even though I can't talk to San Francisco where the headquarters server is. Okay? So I am not reliant on that server to make the processing call or to do call processing like that legacy technology that we talked about earlier was. Okay? The other thing that we do is we have M plus one technology. M plus one means you take what you have in add one more, and now I've taken that reliability and upped it up one more time, right? Because say, for example, New York switch goes out, right? There's a switch over here in San Francisco that will actually relocate itself virtually. It won't physically move, right? But it'll relocate itself to New York and provide telephone services to those users in New York, okay? So think of it like a spare tire. Best analogy I've ever heard of this is a spare tire. Sits in the trunk of your car until you need it, right? One of the tires goes flat. The difference is when that tire goes flat, you have to pull over on the side of the road when it's downpour and traffic stop because there's a wreck on 65. You have to get out and you have to take the old tire off. You have to pull the tire out of the trunk, put the new one on, put the old one back, and then get it fixed, right? Well, with Shortail, that tire actually comes out of the trunk automatically by itself and puts itself on and the old one just sits there until the new one gets there to replace it, okay? So M plus one technology allows you to continue to provide those services even though we've had an outage of a piece of hardware. So we don't, the whole key to us is that there's no single point of failure, okay? So what makes us different? I kind of started talking a little bit about these. In our switches, we use no spinning media, okay? The servers and the legacy uh, architecture that we talked about, as well as the, vo the legacy voice over IP architecture, all of those are server-based, okay? Do you know what the most failed component in a PC or a server is today? The hard drive, okay? The hard drives, they get faster and faster. If you've ever bought a PC, you'll notice, or it, go to Best Buy, they even put it on their little cards now, right? 5400 RPM hard drive, 7200 RPM hard drive. We all, marketing guys figured that out, we all relate to RPMs because that's how fast our cars go, right? How many revolutions per minute. So if I have a 7200 RPM hard drive, that's faster than 54, so I'm going to pay $50 more for that computer, right? Well, it also means I'm going to get my data faster because it's spinning. A hard drive spins, you know, it's a platter that spins on a, on a little post, right? Well, in order to spin, it's got to work on bearings, right? We had never perfected that technology beyond bearings, right? Bearings need grease to stay lubricated so that they continue to spin. Well, if I sit here and if you spin your car at 10,000 RPMs for 65 hours a, a week, right, how long do you think it's going to last? 10,000 RPMs, that's fast, right? I mean, my, my car, my little maximum, I mean, I'm, I try to keep about 2,600 RPM just to keep the gas in it, right? So five, four times faster than I drive, that little hard drive spinning. Those bearings don't last. So the most failed component in a hard drive is, or in a computer is a hard drive, right? Well, the legacy technology, they require a server to decide when I call, I'm sorry, your name came in late. June. June, okay. So when I call June, I dial 615-555-1234, and I want to talk to June. I want to order a million dollars of, what do you say? Insurance. Insurance. More than, yes. Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> My wife, my wife will call you for that one, right? But if she does, don't take the order because she's got something up her sleeve. But no, so I called to order a million dollars worth of insurance for June. Well, if there's a server deciding my call, right? So I'm between John and June on who I'm going to order my insurance from. All right, made up my mind, I'm going June. 
615-555-1234. Be, be, I'm busy. Hang up. I'll give you another chance, so I'll call you back. But your server's crashed because your hard drive died. I can't call you. I got to get this done. I'm just going to call John and order it from him, right? Bad mood, right? Well, we don't use spinning media inside our appliances. We use flash memory. Everybody have one of those little flash drives? Oh, mine broke finally. Fell off my keychain. But you have a little flash drive, right? That thing doesn't, yeah, the USB drives, doesn't spin, does it? It's just a little stick, right? We use that same type of technology in our switches, so nothing spins. So when I add Robert to my system, Robert's in there, and it's stored in that type of, in that flash memory, okay? Also, we use a fully embedded real-time operating system, okay? You use Windows today, okay? Windows user? Okay. You ever had the blue screen? It pops up, you know, critical crash, right? Or, you know, maybe just... Not, not, not responding, I think, is what Outlook says sometimes, right? Okay. OSs, or operating systems, are not always the most reliable piece of a server. Okay. We use a hardened OS, or a highly available, or in a real-time operating system. We use VxWorks, okay, which is found in NASA mission control systems, also found in anti-lock brake systems. Critical for me in Nashville, I'm not from here, I'm from West Tennessee, right? So. 65 is, is my challenge, and I have a little mad. I like to drive really fast, so I, I lock my brakes up frequently, so I'm glad that, that VX works. Imagine if I hit my brakes and Bill Gates said, eh, I'm going to reboot right now, thanks. Bam, I'm smashing into somebody, right? Um, the other thing is finding pacemakers. So, uh, you know, very, very highly uptime needed uh, uh, piece of hardware there. And finally, 15 years mean time between failure. Now, we say 15, and Richard and I discuss this frequently. We have some switches. Keep in mind, we've been around since 1996. We'll talk a little bit more about short tail in a few minutes. But we've been around since 1996, so we're actually just at 16 years old as a company. Well, our boxes have tested out that far in live production. Okay, We're doing some accelerated testing, and we're showing like it looks like it's going to be closer to 30 years. But our document, what we can say effectively is 15 years between one of these little pieces of hardware should fail, and that's just where we... I mean, we're a 15-year-old company. That's where we are today, right? So we can actually, when you look at that box, makes your call process. When I called you in to order that million dollars of insurance, that little box makes a decision, has all of that reliability built into it, okay? Availability. Again, I talked about servers. I'm not reliant on that server to make that call processing decision. I don't need that hard drive. I don't need that Windows OS operating system to make that decision that when I call, your phone rings, all right? M plus one, we talked about that, where you add another piece of, one piece of equipment. Our competitors do N times one. So you buy one server, you buy another one. You buy two servers, you buy two more. It's always times, right? So whatever you buy, buy another one. It's kind of like if you bought your car yesterday, did you buy a second one just to keep in case that one broke? Why would you do that with a phone system, okay? And then remote survivability. In the example where we talked about New York went down, we actually virtually relocated that switch. And then the key to, to the uniqueness of ours is it's, we say a single image system. Now, some people will tell you that they have a single, um, they phrase it a little bit different. We truly are a single system, right? So with our single system, whether you're in New York, Seattle, Nashville, Brentwood, Cool Springs, Memphis, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Columbia, it doesn't matter, all right? We are a single system. There's one database for our entire network. So you have consistent features. If you've ever worked in an office where maybe you had a, a you know, PBX uh, manufacturer A over here and PBX manufacturer B over here, you use your phone like this in Memphis and then you go to Nashville and it operates totally different. You go learn, oh, how do I do a conference? Ah, forget it. Well, you do. Pull out the cell phone, just do it there, right? Well, with ours, we have a single image, right? We are a single system, so therefore, you have consistent features. Same way you conference in Memphis, same way you conference in Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Columbia, Wood, Lord, wherever you are, okay? Also, managed as a single system. We talked about it earlier. Have you ever managed a PBX? Have you ever had to, to add a user? Or have you ever had to, to change somebody's name? You know, somebody gets married and needs to change their name. Well, how do you do that? Typically, you call John and say, hey, John, I need you to come out and change the clock. You know, central daylight. How many, how many times have you had a phone that's wrong because daylight savings, right? 
What do you do? You normally call John. John rolls a truck out there. John sends you a bill for $120 for the gas it took to get there, $60, you know, for a, for a quarter hour, you know, half hour minimum, so another hundred, so $250 to change your clock. And when you change your watch, I'll do it for 20 bucks. You're not going to pay me for that, right? So you got to be able to manage it, and you got to be able to manage the entire network. You know, we're, we're scaling this to bigger, to, you got to manage it. How do you do it? From a single point of entry. And then the scalability, right? We talked about it earlier. I think you might not have been here for that particular piece. But with our system, you start with one phone. That same phone can grow from, you know, your base system with just a single phone up to the largest deployment, you know, 20,000 plus users. And you never throw a single piece away. All right, so we talked about why is architecture important? Well, the administration, availability, reliability, and cost. Did that cover all that? Y'all see the value benefit? Okay. All right. So, a couple of other little things about it. How do you integrate with other technology? You guys ever hear of Microsoft Dynamics? Probably not. You have, because you're in technology. But have you guys ever heard of it? Probably not. But that one you've heard of, Salesforce.com, haven't you? That one's, I mean, they're real big. They're always in the news. CRM, or Customer Relationship Management, okay? We have a, green, or we have a technology that integrates all of these different types of technology, okay? All, all of these are CRM manufacturers, okay? Uh, CopyTrack and EquiTrack actually use more in legal firms, uh, keeping up with, you know, cost recovery, stuff like that. NetSuite and Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics are CRMs, or Customer Relationship Management. So when I call... What good is that? You and I discuss something, right? But you, unfortunately, you know, you start your own business and you grow and you get to go retire and work from, from uh, the Caribbean someplace, right? Well, what happened to all of those customers, all those small guys, you know, me just ordering a million dollars, you know, when Rich is going to order 10 million from you, you know, who manages that relationship? How do you track that? Well, we provide technology that links your phone to that information. So when I call, it can log it for you, okay? When you pull it up, you get, do you ever set reminders, you know, hey, call, you know, call John and remind him he needs to pay his premiums or, you know, call Richard, call Richard and tell him he needs to up his policy, you know, because, uh, um, you know, his, his ex-wife found out he's making more money, so she's going to off him. I don't know. You got to, you got to, you, you got all those reminders, right? So if you could make it, right now you just get a reminder, hey, call them. So then you have to look their number up and then you dial your phone, right? Well, with CRM integration, you actually get that reminder. You just click a button, call Richard. And Richard's phone, hey, Richard, pay your premiums or upgrade policy. Hey, we got a sale right now, whatever your case may be. Okay. All right. So now I want to kind of dig a little bit into mobility. I don't want to go too deep. We can go offline with it after we get done if you want to. Um, I have just about, yeah, I think I've got everything covered. So mobility you see. We talked about, I'm, I'm kind of rehash my story real quick. I was at an appointment yesterday. You have two phones today, right? You have your business phone and you have your cell phone, right? UC stands for unified communication. If you have a phone on your desk and a phone in your pocket, is that unified? Nope. Unified means one, right? Okay. So what Shortel has, we have Shortel Mobility, and what we do is we actually provide PBX features or, or office features to your cell phone, okay? To a smartphone, do you have an a iPhone or, okay? iPhone and an iPad, right? Okay. So I, I was talking to somebody the other day about that. The cloud is really nice, but it's still not one. My email, if I delete one, it deletes over here. But there's still some stuff I do on my iPhone that doesn't show up on my iPad. I, I got to bring that a little closer. I'll be great. But what we have, we have the short term mobility router that gives us the ability to load some software on our smart devices, okay, whether they're Blackberries, uh, iPhones, iPads. What about an iPod Touch? How do you use an iPod Touch as a phone? Actually, I discovered it, yes, we, I mean, we discovered it a long time ago, but we had a big discussion about it, dealing with the college, right? They're looking at, they have Wi-Fi throughout the building. So instead of buying IP phones for all their uh, mobile, all their mobile workers that are mobile, not sitting at a desk, we're looking at buying iPod Touches, and we deploy our mobility solution on it, and then a Touch, which is how much? $189 replaces the IP phone, okay? Very economical. Um, Android, um, I actually have an Android with me, so we can talk, if, if anybody's using Android, we have it running on this. 
Um, Nokia and Winmo or Windows Mobile. Windows Mobile is kind of up in the air. What are they going to do with it? Eight's going to decide some stuff. Microsoft's got some stuff coming next week. But what this, what, what short-term mobility does is it enables your PC or your UC or your unified communications at your mobile handset. Okay, so what we do is we provide a, it's called the short-term mobility router that creates a connection back into your PBX, okay, the, the, the short tail phone system, right, from wherever you are. So you don't have to launch anything. All you do is just open up. Right now you hit a green icon to make a phone call, right? You have iPhone too? You got a regular phone? So when you make a phone, when you make a phone call on, a, on an iPhone, you hit the green button that says phone, right? Got a little hands on. Or if you have Siri, you just talk to it. You can tell Siri, hey, call.